I read again uh, from 1 Kings 18 and verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Well, we're looking at this last portion in this chapter, 1 Kings 18, and my title for this evening is Elijah, a man of prayer, a man of prayer. The contest between Elijah uh, and the prophets of Baal is over, or really a contest be between the living God, Jehovah, and uh, uh, Baal, the f idol. And of course, the Lord has won. Jehovah God, we saw last week, answered uh, by fire. The people, when they saw uh, the, the fire come down from heaven in answer to uh, Elijah's prayer, well, they cried in unison, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And then uh, we read in verse 40 how the prophets of Baal, they were marched down, back down the hill to the brook Kidron, uh, where they were slain, they were put to death as judgment, uh, really, for their sin. What about King Ahab, we may ask? What's going to happen to him? Doesn't he also deserve to be put to death? After all, he is, he is the one who's the main instigator of Baal worship in Israel. He is the one who is just as guilty, more culpable maybe, more guilty than the prophets of Baal. He married, as we, re uh, we read before, the Phoenician uh, Jezebel, and through her was introduced Baal worship into Israel and spread, promoted over Israel. He is blameworthy in so many ways. And perhaps Ahab may have thought, oh, I'll be the next one to be slain, and yet uh, he is spared. Perhaps he thought, well, the people, Elijah will tell the people to go after him, and kill him as well, but Elijah uh, probably wouldn't put his hand to the king, and probably hoped as well that uh, reformation would come through the word of the king, that Ahab, having seen all that God did in answering miraculously by fire, well, he would turn back to the living God. Well, he didn't quite do that, and yet here we see Ahab, his life is spared, and instead of a word of uh, condemnation, as it were. It's a, he gets a somewhat merciful, gracious word. Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now some commentators, they think uh, here that Elijah is concerned only for uh, the, the well-being, the, the health, as it were, of Ahab. Poor guy, he hasn't eaten uh, the whole day. So Elijah is saying to him, you know, uh, go up and have uh, some food. Uh, there's been no time to eat. You, you should eat now. But it, the, the thought seems to be something more than just a physical concern of Elijah for Ahab. The thought seems to be something else and more along the lines maybe of be of good cheer, Ahab. Be of good cheer. Uh, eat and drink because the rain is coming. There is the sound of an abundance of rain. The rain is soon to come. The cause of it now has been dealt with. The, the prophets of Baal have been put to death. The drought is, uh, is uh, over. And so, uh, so the rain is going to come. Well, that would have been good news uh, to Ahab. It's what he wanted. It's what he's been desiring for the last three and a half years. And so he went up into the mountain, up to his tent, no doubt, which had been set up for him uh, to, pray, uh, to uh, eat and to drink. Well, he goes to eat and to drink, and we'll see in a minute how Elijah went up uh, to pray. But in verse 41 there, he said, there is a sound of abundance of rain. Was this a physical sound? Did Elijah actually hear the wind rustling in the trees and the, storm, the premonitions of a storm uh, coming? Unlikely, because the, the, the skies, well, they were still clear at this time. And uh, this is more likely uh, something that uh, Elijah uh, heard by faith. 
He had had a word from the Lord already. We see that in the beginning of the chapter, in verse, chapter 18, verse 1. Go show thyself, the Lord said unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. So he knows that God is going to send rain. He has that word of promise. But now, and, and now that the cause of judgment has been removed, he has this sort of intimation from the Lord uh, that the rain was on its way. It wasn't a physical hearing of the year, but it was a hearing of faith. He was able to hear it. Of course, Ahab never heard anything, but Elijah heard the sound of it even when there was nothing uh, in the air, nothing in the sky. He heard the sound of uh, abundance of rain. Well, there's a, a little application for us here. The believer sees things the unbeliever doesn't see. The unbeliever cannot see uh, certain things. The unbeliever's carnal mind. He only sees natural things. He has to see physically with his eyes. He cannot uh, see as the believer sees, uh, who sees by faith. We're not talking here about some charismatic intimation and charismatic voices saying, saying things to us. But uh, the believer uh, can, can, uh, has some idea sometimes of what the Lord is doing. He sees God's hand. The unbeliever doesn't see God's hand in the natural things that happen around us or in the disasters that happen around us. He just sees it, oh, it's just natural occurrences which are happening. But the believer sees something more. He sees God at work even through the things which are happening in this world. For example, uh, we may see a uh, tsunami taking place in one part of the world, and the, the, the world would say, well, that's just a natural occurrence. That, and they would give the, the reasons for that. But the believer would say, yes, that's the re that's, it's a natural occurrence in one sense, but it's also like a mini-judgment. It's a call to people to awake and to repent and to trust in God and to turn back to Him. And he would also see in these things, it's a forerunner of the day of judgment, which is to come. And he sees in this many judgments that are happening in the world, he sees something more that, oh, God is going to, uh, 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 there's a great day of judgment ahead of us. Or when he hears that the gospel is spreading, when he hears that the gospel is being received in countries where before it wasn't being received, and more, uh, God has his people in more and more countries and nations. And people with different tongues and languages are, are singing his praise. And the Bible is being translated into more and more dialects and languages. Well, he's, he sees this as an intimation of that time when all nations will come and bow down the knee uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he sees and hears these things uh, by uh, faith. Well, Elijah, uh, he hears the sound, the sound which he hears, uh, the sound of rain, uh, hears by faith. We could also say is a summons to him to prayer. It's a call to Elijah to pray. So while Ahab goes up to eat and drink, Elijah uh, goes up to into the mountain to find a quiet spot where he can uh, pray uh, alone with the Lord. And his, of course his servant is there. He didn't, he didn't just sit still uh, waiting for the rain. He prayed uh, for it. And it's a lesson uh, here uh, for us as well. Uh, when we sometimes hear sounds, in inverted commas, uh, we are, it's a call, a summons to us to pray. So if we hear... Uh, of, oh, there's a small increase, for example, in our Sunday school. And we see a few more people uh, coming in uh, to the Sunday school. Uh, well, that may be an intimation, a call, that's a call to us to pray more. That's a call to us to uh, pray and intercede further for God's uh, blessings. It may be that uh, we will see an even greater number uh, coming in and uh, uh, joining in. Uh, the, that Sunday school. Or we may hear of somebody in our congregation and they've come under uh, conviction 
of, of sin. Maybe a sermon has spoken to them. Sometimes maybe they're tearful. Or maybe somebody in the congregation has begun asking questions. And they never asked questions before. Well, that's a, a, a call, a summons to us to pray. And to uh, pray not only for that person, but to pray. It may be that the Lord is going to uh, uh, make other people as well uh, more concerned about their soul. And bring conviction not just to that one, but uh, to others. An abundance, as it were, of rain. Uh, and so it's a summons uh, to us as well when we see uh, things happening uh, to resort uh, to pray but we may ask uh, the question why pray why bother praying if God has given the promise if God has said there's going to be rain well why did Elisha Elijah need to, pr to pray he already had the word from God uh, why not wait and just sit still until God answered, the, uh, until God sent the rain. Is prayer really necessary if God is going to do what he intends to do? Well, the answer, friends, is a resounding yes. Prayer is vital. Prayer is essential uh, in the work of God and in the decrees of God as well. Many promises are given to us in the scriptures, but they will go unfil unfulfilled to us if we don't pray, we may read the promises and we appreciate and are encouraged by it. But uh, if we don't take it, as it were, and plead them before the Lord and ask the Lord uh, to make it, uh, as it were, come, come to pass in our lives or in our church, then they will just remain uh, as uh, promises. We have not because uh, we ask not, uh, James says. And the promises, well, there are, they are a help to us, uh, to instructors uh, to pray, uh, and they, they teach us, they give us some guidance in how we are to pray. And as we pray, well, the answer is given. Yes, God decreed that the rain should come, but he also, as part of that decree, has decreed Elijah's prayer. Elijah's prayer was a part of that uh, decree of, of the Lord and it's the same for us our prayers are essential if we don't pray for the work of God if we don't pray for God's blessing we won't have it if we don't pray uh, for souls to be saved well we won't see souls saved they don't just, it doesn't just happen like that God moves us to pray and usually when he's moving us to pray and we're fervent to pray well that's a sign as an indication of his intention uh, to bless us and of a promised blessing uh, in some way or, or other. Well, uh, it's so prayer uh, is vital and works in connection uh, with, with the Lord and his decrees to, to, for the Lord to bring about those plans and purposes uh, that he has preordained. But verse 42, we see... Uh, Elijah, when he went up to the top of Carmel, he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between uh, his knees. He cast himself down. He's, he puts himself in this humble praying position. Here he is, friends, the bold, fearless prophet before Ahab, the fearless prophet before the prophets of Baal. Here he is uh, on his knees, humbling himself, before God and once again praying to God. This is not the first time uh, we have him praying in these chapters. Uh, we saw him in praying first for the rain to stop. Then we saw him praying when that widow's son uh, died and he prayed for the soul to come back into the child and it, it came. And then we saw last week how the, he prayed for the Lord to answer by fire. Prayer is the habit of his life. He resorts to prayer. His strength, his power for life, for living, for service uh, is being alone uh, with God. This is uh, his habit. Before kings, before these false prophets, well, he's as bold as a lion. But before the Lord, he is humble uh, before him. He bends 
uh, his knee uh, in secret, in, in secret uh, prayer. And this was the habit, uh, the way that he was. He realized uh, his uh, smallness. And friends, uh, brethren, as whenever we come to pray, yes, we come to God as our Father, and he, he loves us. But at the same time, we realize that he is a great king. And we must always, uh, together with confidence, uh, come with the realization that we are small. Who are we? Who am I in comparison to God? I am so small. Uh, I am, uh, this is the lesser talking to the greater. This is the servant uh, talking to his master. This is the creature talking to his maker. This is the subject talking to his king. And with that sort of feeling and that sort of realization, we must uh, come before the Lord. Not cowering in fear, but a sense of, well, uh, our own uh, smallness in view of how great our God is. Not demanding of God in prayer, not dictating to him and telling him what he should do, certainly not commanding the Lord. There are some people, you know, who teach this. There are some people who teach you can command God what to do. No, friends, we don't tell him what to do. He tells us what to do, and we must listen to him. There are some preachers who will uh, teach their congregation that you can command God what to do. No, we, 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 we don't come in that sort of uh, attitude at all. Earnest prayer, yes. Fervent prayer, yes. But it must always be a humble pleading uh, with the Lord, just here uh, like uh, uh, Elijah. And also we can draw out another lesson from this Elijah's prayer before we move on. Uh, is there not a lesson here for pastors, for ministers, and for all Christian workers? Every Christian should be a Christian worker. I don't like to categorize you know, Christians who are Christian workers. Every one of us isn't it, is called to be a Christian worker. Well, here is a lesson for uh, those involved in the work of the kingdom. After preaching, after corporate witness, after a personal witness maybe that comes your way in the office or somewhere in the neighborhood, uh, or after a, a, a corporate witness with the church, uh, well, pray. That's what Elijah did after his time with the prophets of Baal. Great victory. Yet still he resorts, goes up into the mountain to pray. And after we have preached our sermons, after we're at the end of uh, the Lord's Day, or uh, the preacher, the pastor as well, well, he must give some time to praying for the Lord's blessing uh, on the work uh, that has gone on uh, that day and the messages that have gone out. Verse 43, after, uh, he, after praying, he sends his servant uh, up to the top to look out around, uh, uh, to look up uh, uh, toward the sea. Is there any sign uh, of uh, rain coming? And he, the servant comes back with the response, there is nothing. Nothing. And uh, Elijah expected something. He expected God to answer uh, his prayer. But there was nothing. Not a cloud in the sky, no movement, no, st no strong wind, nothing uh, physical that he could see. No intimation of an answer uh, from, from that point. And I think we can all identify, isn't it, with Elijah here. So often we, we as well, we have prayed and We've seen nothing. We've longed to, to uh, pour out our hearts in faith to the Lord. We expected the Lord to hear us and to answer us, but then we see no change. We see uh, perhaps we've prayed for visitors and not one visitor turns up for that gospel service that we're longing to see people come. There's no response to that invitation that we gave out. Uh, there's no movement uh, from uh, that uh, uh, unconverted person. He's still the same. He seems unmoved. We prayed for him so many times, and he seems unmoved. Nothing. 
seems to be happening uh, in uh, his life, or no uh, conversions. Well, it's, it can be quite uh, depressing, but uh, not with Elijah. He'll, he's going to carry on uh, praying, as we'll see. But why? Uh, we, we could ask, why doesn't the Lord give us uh, the answer after our first prayer? Why doesn't he immediately give us what we ask for? Uh, well, there is a reason why a delay is put in place. And it, it may, may well be, because we are prone to this, it may well puff us up with pride. You know, every time I pray, I get an answer. My prayer achieved this. My prayer did that. Because uh, we, and we may end up taking the glory to ourselves. And we may think, well, I have some sort of inherent power uh, in me. It's me, my prayer, that made the difference. And so that's, uh, that's sometimes why the Lord uh, delays us. Or, and to teach us as well, well, we are dependent. We are dependent on God. We need Him. We need Him to bless us. Uh, we need Him uh, to move. Uh, and without Him, uh, we can't uh, do uh, anything. And so uh, the delay is a good help. Uh, actually, to us. Uh, verse 43, he, he said to his servant, uh, go again uh, seven times. He didn't give up praying. He persevered uh, in it. He knew he was praying a right prayer. He had a promise from God. He knew it was God's will uh, to answer. He knew he wasn't asking amiss just for his own glory or for his own lust. And so he persisted uh, in prayer. And though he may also have felt disappointed when he heard those words again and again and again, there is nothing, repeated discouragement, you could say. But for Elijah, well, the, it has a, an effect of making him more earnest. He was more stimulated. He was more animated because he knew this was God's will. And it didn't make him leave off prayer but it made him more fervent uh, in prayer. You know, James chapter 5 and verse 17 and 18, the, the prayer, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain. And he prayed again uh, that it would rain, uh, and it did. The earnest prayer uh, on his behalf. Every, every time uh, he got down on his knees. And a good work, friend, friends, is being done uh, in us when we persevere in prayer. Uh, God uh, is, is uh, for a reason delaying, uh, but it, te it, should, it teaches us uh, to persevere in earnest prayer, believing prayer. Uh, and it's humbling, isn't it, to wait uh, for God. It's, it does a good work in us because uh, persevering prayer, as it were, teaches us uh, to, to wait uh, for God. Uh, again, it a, 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 has a humbling effect uh, upon us. And it also prepares us for the answer. It prepares us to receive the answer when it comes. We are more able, we're better able to handle the answer in a right way when God gives it. Maybe initially, when we start off the prayer, well, maybe we're not ready, we're not able to, ha to handle the answer. Or maybe our thinking behind it is uh, not quite right. And as we go on in prayer, it becomes clearer what the answer should be or the way that we should uh, handle it. And let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say. Hannah. You think of Hannah in the Old Testament. Now, if she had had a child in the ordinary way, and, uh, with, and it was very easy for her to have a child, well, maybe she, most likely, she wouldn't have named him Samuel. And most likely, she wouldn't have lent him to the Lord. But because she had to go, because she was childless, year after year, she prayed for a child. And during that time, surely the Lord worked in her until... We read the, uh, just before the Lord answered her prayer, she said, Lord, give me a man child and I'll give him back to you. She'd come back, she'd come to that position where she was willing to give that baby 
uh, if God gave her a baby, opened her womb, gave her a baby, she would give him uh, back uh, to the Lord. And she was earnest in her prayer. She also uh, didn't give up. And so it was when the Lord uh, did open her womb and give her a child, well, then she said, let him be called Samuel, asked of the Lord. And uh, she lent him, uh, as you read there, uh, uh, to uh, the Lord. And uh, it's, it's, she was ready at that time. Uh, the, the delay in prayer, the persevering in prayer, helped her to handle the answer uh, better uh, when it came. Well, finally, uh, at last, uh, there is this, uh, some visible sign. It came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. At last, there is some small visible sign, and a servant is sent uh, to Ahab with a message. And once again, he must know uh, that the reason, he must know that the rain is not, hasn't just come naturally, but it's come at the word of Elijah, as, uh, as we've looked at and mentioned uh, before. A little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand, a sign of things to come, an abundance of rain that was uh, to come. And we may, uh, and that's exactly really what happened. Uh, it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain uh, there, and Ahab rode uh, uh, to uh, Jezreel. But small things, friends, a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And again, a, a lesson, an application for us. We may see small things uh, happening among us, small tokens of the Lord's presence and power. But let us not be discouraged by these things. Uh, let us not be dis uh, discouraged and despise uh, small things. D uh, do not despise the day of small things, the scripture tells us. But we continue to hope and to wait uh, for an abundance. We continue to hope and wait that that small token of blessing that we see is just an indication of further blessings and an abundance of blessings uh, to come. And so we hope and wait on the Lord to turn it into an abundance, an abundance of souls uh, being saved and added uh, even to uh, our assembly here. We can also think of this uh, uh, little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand, uh, something very small, as even something like we have as a taste of grace. Whilst we are in this world, well, we have a token, as it were. We have a, it's, it's wonderful to us what we have. We treasure, we, it's wonderful, it's amazing. But friends, it's only a small part compared to what God has in store for us in the world to come. Uh, it's, it's a small experience we have of the Lord and of Christ here, but all untold blessings. What an abundance has been prepared for us in heaven, in glory, for all God's people. Oh, friends, uh, it's nothing uh, can be uh, compared to it. Now we have an earnest. Now we have just a deposit. You have a house. You want to buy a house, you must put down a deposit for it. And that's just a, a, a token of, uh, of, what's, of, what, uh, of, of the full payment. But for us, it's the same. We have a deposit now. We have an earnest now. But the inheritance is uh, to come. The inheritance prepared uh, by the Lord for his people. And how, how much we have uh, to rejoice in, uh, in that. And then as we uh, close... We see in verses 45 to 46, Ahab rode to Jezre went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of uh, Jezreel. Well, that's a good distance of around 16 miles. But the hand of the Lord was upon him. What does that mean? Well, some people say that uh, he had an intimation from the Lord that he should uh, go uh, to uh, Jezreel and other 
uh, other occurrences in the scriptures where this phrase is used uh, suggests that. But it also suggests that he was given some supernatural strength. Well, which one is it? Is it an intimation from the Lord or supernatural strength to run? Well, I, I think it's probably both. Uh, an intimation from the Lord as he was led by the Lord uh, and also uh, it had been a long day. It had been a tiring day, physically exhausting day, even for uh, this strong uh, nomadic man. And yet uh, he needed the help uh, of the Lord even to run all those miles uh, to, uh, to Jezreel. And so it was perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps this which, which happened. He ran ahead in front of uh, Ahab. He, uh, Ahab could see him running ahead uh, of him. And perhaps Elijah ran with the thought, well, uh, maybe now the gospel, or rather the reformation that has been begun is going to continue and it's going to spread. And maybe now Ahab is going to change and he's going to uh, bring Israel back again uh, to the worship of the true God. But sadly, it was not to be. And he would be uh, disappointed uh, when even he reached uh, Jezreel, as you will see, God willing, uh, next week. But just to leave you, friends, uh, with these few thoughts on prayer and the importance of prayer. The Holy Spirit has left this on record for us to learn from. And there's, this is just, as you know, one of many accounts of prayer and intercession. And surely there must be uh, some, um, some reason, some good reason uh, to encourage us to pray, but also to show us the importance of prayer. Oh, friends, uh, so many accounts. Time would fail me really to, to speak of them all, but you think of Moses interceding uh, uh, and, uh, in the war against Amalek. Or we think of Daniel uh, praying in the lion's den, Jacob wrestling uh, with God, and the New Testament church praying earnestly for Peter's deliverance from prison and uh, how God uh, used prayer, the prayers of his people, uh, to bring about great answers to prayer and to bring about his uh, purposes. So let us be encouraged to work for the Lord and to pray for the Lord and see and ever hold in our minds the importance of earnest, persevering prayer uh, in the work of God. Amen.